Okay, so the next two slides are just a review of the most important T-cells for the boards. These are things that we've already talked about, but just presented in a different way. You can use this slide to compare the Th1 cell to the Th2 cell. Again, remember that these are CD4 T-cells. Remember that after their activation, Th1 cells mainly help two other cell types. Again, this was discussed on the previous slide, but they produce IL-2, which stimulates the proliferation of CD8 T cells. They also produce interferon gamma, which superactivates macrophages. Of course, this allows macrophages to kill phagocytose bacteria. CD8 T cells, on the other hand, go off and induce apoptosis in host cells which are infected with virus in order to prevent the spread of the virus. Activation of CD4 cells to become Th2 cells results in the production of interleukin-4 and interleukin-5 by these Th2 cells. And these are the main cytokines that promote B cell activation and antibody secretion. You can see here that we've said that the Th2 cells regulate the humoral response. Humoral referring to the protective functions of antibodies within the blood. Of course, because antibodies are relatively small, they are found not only in the blood, but also in the tissues, that is, in the extracellular environment or extracellular matrix. Conversely, Th1 cells provide what we call cell-mediated protection or response. And this is because the protection which is being promoted by Th1 cells is mediated through cells and not antibodies, namely CD8 T cells and macrophages. It's also worth mentioning that Th1 cells and Th2 cells tend to inhibit one another, such that during an immune response you tend to get one or the other and not both. Th2 cells produce IL-10, interleukin-10, which disfavors the production of Th1 cells. Th1 cells, on the other hand, will produce interferon gamma, which you already know, which disfavors the production of Th2 cells. And this is mainly to keep the immune response specific. If you have an intracellular infection going on, you mainly want to drive the Th1 response. On the other hand, if you have a parasitic or extracellular infection, you mainly want to drive the Th2 response. Thus, the reciprocal inhibition, Th1 and Th2, provides additional specificity to the immune response. Finally, as we've discussed before, cytotoxic T cells, or CD8 T cells, kill host cells which are presenting viral peptides via their class I MHC molecules. They can also recognize neoplastic cells and donor graft or transplanted cells. When they recognize these types of cells, they are induced to release two important proteins, perforin, and granzyme. Perforin actually forms a small hole in the membrane of the target cell, through which granzyme can actually be introduced. When granzyme is introduced into a cell, it activates an apoptosis cascade, which efficiently and neatly removes the cell. After the cell undergoes apoptosis, it fragments itself into small cellular bodies which are known as apoptotic bodies and these bodies can actually be taken up by macrophages and other phagocytes, which efficiently destroy any residual pathogens.